Hello everyone, it's Dr. Johnson. Welcome back to True Stylist Injury Recovery and Performance Education Online, episode 13 today. What we're gonna be talking about is underuse or deconditioning injuries and how to avoid some of the common mistakes that people make when they're trying to get back into activity. Uh, we've talked about traumatic injury and how when you have a violent, uh, abrupt injury, how we have to shut down the system to allow for a targeted area of your body to recover. Well, we know that as that area starts to heal, you want to get right back into activity, and there's a way to go about that. But we also know that for many of you who have really had to dive into some schoolwork, you've been diving in maybe into, into your careers, or you've been stuck suddenly on a quarantine for six weeks, you're putting yourself into a situation where your body is slowly ramped down on the activity level. So what I want to make clear is that when you're in a period of time when your lifestyle is a little more sedentary, your stress volumes from a repetition perspective may be dropping, but in reality, the postural stressors that you're under are actually increasing. So when you have a period of time with deconditioning or a sedentary lifestyle, we have high stress levels or high stress volume, volume coming in because of postural stress. So what's happening when you actually slow things down? Well, we know that when you stop, stop using the muscular system, muscles become short, they can become tight, and if you aren't paying attention to some of your self-care activities, they can become dehydrated, denourished, and will have some issues with clearing inflammation if you're not getting the right amounts of sleep. So. We've got a high level of stress from the postural stress, the muscular system is being compromised. We have some altered mechanics that would happen as a result of that. Well, it's not just the altered linear mechanics of the muscles, but what about your nervous system? When you shut down the use of your muscular system for a period of time, you're gonna have balance and coordination issues, loss of balance and coordination. You can easily have a change in your cardiovascular conditioning it makes it harder for your body to keep up to, de to deliver that fuel. And obviously some fatigue issues with that. So it makes it easier for you to get gassed. So we're gonna put you in a situation to successfully come out of deconditioning or underuse. We want to affect the main things that have been changed before we just flip that switch and ramp you back up into the high activity level that you're really excited about getting back into and that is this. The first thing we want you to do is prioritize your self-care. We want to create that environment for healing so that as you start to ramp up your activity level, you have the nutrients, the hydration, and the recovery protocols available to you to accelerate recovery, number one. The second thing we want you to do is we want you to cautiously move yourself back into activity with linear movements. We don't want you trying to move ballistically right out of the gates, even though you're probably excited to get moving and you want to get back into, into doing the things you used to do. We want to have a progressive load over a period of time and very linear movements so that you have the opportunity to wake up that muscular system, get that balanced coordination coming back, get your fuel delivery and cardiovascular system ramping back up to meet the increased demands of this higher activity level. And if you move through your recovery cautiously, you'll actually have the fastest recovery possible with the least amount of wear and tear and the least amount of injury uh, going forward. So in essence, I think the biggest mistake that people make when they're looking to get back into activity whether it's because they want to train for something, maybe you've been sedentary for a period of time and your body composition is not what you want, to, what you want it to be, so you want to whip yourself into shape quickly, I want you to be thinking methodically and progressively and give yourself a time to do some checks and some balances as you incrementally increase your activity level. There's no reason to try to go from zero to hero because if you do that, chances are it's not gonna work out the best for you. So with that in mind, I want you to enjoy your workout today. When you're suffering from some quarantine blues, I want you to remind you to keep working and chipping away at your self-care. Dive into these workouts. If you've been doing our workouts now for a few weeks, there is absolutely no reason why you can't start slapping a few of them together to create your own 20, 40, or 60 minute routines by mixing and matching the upper body work, the lower body work, and the full body work with the yoga, the mobility, and the strength training protocols. 
We hope you're enjoying our system so far and look forward to seeing you for episode 14. Hey everyone, my name is Derek. This is True Sal's Upper Body Strength. With me as always, Dom and Kate, two of our true athletes. And first thing we're going to show you today is how to do dips on your couch, a chair, a countertop, anything you got at home. So, go ahead and get into that dip position for me, boys. Legs straight if you can, right? And all we're going to do is lower ourselves to the floor, breathing in through our nose as we go, exhaling through our mouth as we come up. Ideally, we're gonna do this for a minute. Now, if you're unable to do that, or maybe you can do half of it and then it gets too tough, we can bring our feet in and help push with our feet when we get to the bottom of the repetition. Focusing on those triceps. After we finish the dips, we're going to make our way to our tabletop or quadruped position. We have a of the mobility segments. And all I want to have Kate and Dom do is they're going to bring their hips forward and at the same time slide their hands out. Now, this is a threshold thing. Maybe you can get your arms just past your shoulders. Maybe you can get them all the way out like these two young men. Whatever's hard for you, that's where we want to be, right? Don't need you guys to do all this and not be able to do the rep. I'm going to go for one minute. Give a great stretch of the serratus and the lats at the bottom of the rep. And as we exhale, we come back.
towel reach, we're going to go ahead and get into a push-up position. Now, once more, when we're in that push-up position, we're going to have a nice flat back, right? No winging, no scapulas, and we're going to do what are called negative push-ups. So I'm going to focus on coming down as slowly as I possibly can, breathing in through my nose the whole time. I'd say about four to five one thousands, right? One thousand, two one thousand. Once you get there, just push to your knees, then back into your push-up position. We're going to do this for a minute. If you feel like challenge yourself a little bit, you can just push up from the bottom of the rep like you would usually in a normal push-up.
upper body strength segment is a one-legged, one-arm row. Now, you can do this with a gallon water jug like Cade's got. You can do it with your dad's bowling ball, a box of cat litter, whatever you may have. What I care about is this 90 degree angle here and this nice flat back there. You're gonna row that sucker up and back, looking for almost 90 degrees here. That's gonna allow us to really engage the lat. You don't need a ton of weight to do that, then back down. In through my nose, out through my mouth. Boom. You're gonna do a minute on each side. 